This is Thea Sugarman Lee, and I'm reading Return to Love by Gloria K. and T.S. Lee. Chapter 1 Gwen Lee Wen faced the water, letting the cool breeze whip around her hair and her face. She concentrated on her breathing, in through her nose, out through her mouth. She visualized the salty air sweeping through her mind, pushing the remnants of the dream into a box. She slammed the lid. She would deal with the dream later, just as she dealt with the memories that were such a deep part of her, alone, when she could cry into her pillow. The wind picked up, scattering stinging particles of sand against her legs. She pulled her jacket zipper a little higher and swept her hand over her hair to keep the short layers down. Free, she called to the Boston Terrier playing at the water's edge. Let's go warm up so I can review my new client's records, she said, as she clipped the leash onto the dog's harness. Bree took the opportunity to bounce up and plant a quick lick on Gwen's cheek. Gwen laughed and stood upright. Okay, girl, let's go home. She took one more quick look at the wa wave-tossed water and turned at the tug on the leash. Brew was anxious to get home, too. It was a quick walk along the sidewalk and the cute little gingerbread cottages. She loved this neighborhood and her neighbors who were friendly without prying. She returned waves from windows and the occasional person working in their yards. She didn't ch stop to chat. Getting ready for work, Gwen? Lacey, her nearest neighbor, asked. Yes, time to get my nose to the grindstone, when re Gwen replied with a smile, but didn't slow down. She marched along, Bree trotting happily along at her side. She went past the vacant block that separated her cottage from the neighbors. They walked between the carless garage and the house to the back door. She pulled the key from her pocket. She knew from experience that Bree had no patience for waiting until the door was unlocked. As soon as Gwen stepped onto the small stoop, she put the key into the lock and twisted the knob. Bree was dancing and snorting before the door swung open. Laughing, Gwen allowed Bree to tug her into the shelter of the entry alcove and lock the door. She unclipped the leash and said, wipe your feet. The little dog dug all four feet on the throw rug. She trotted over to a water dish for a noisy drink while Gwen took off her sandy wellies and jacket. What a good little cheese dog, she said, using the dog's nickname. Bree sneezed, shook her head, and followed Gwen into the kitchen. Gwen ground some coffee beans and put them in the top of her coffee maker. She added water, turned the machine on. She took the cream from the refrigerated refrigerator and opened a cupboard to take out her favorite clay pottery mug. As she poured herself a cup of the fragrant dark liquid, she smiled. Her son loved the decorated octopus on it. Her heart squeezed as she remembered his delighted giggle every time he looked at it. She squeezed her eyes shut, trying in vain to stop the stream of memories. <sighs> the crash of metal, the sound of shattering glass, the screaming, the pain from impact, and then the pleading voice of her son, Mama, please, the science center, take me back, please, please, Mama. The sweet voice faltered and faded. Oh, Sebastian, she whispered, we should have stayed one more night. She opened her eyes and felt a tear trickle down her cheek. She wiped it away, took a deep breath, and mentally shook herself. Get a grip. Time to go to work. She picked up her client's notes and her point book and took her coffee into the living room. She turned the television to a Northwest News show for the weather report. She put the notes in order of appointments until she came to the new client. The referral had come from a sports medicine surgeon who was also a friend of hers. Dr. Wing Pai was an orthopedic surgeon with large clientele of professional athletes. This one was a wide receiver for the Seattle Kingfishers. The referral indicated a shoulder injury, neck pain, and recurring headaches. He didn't go into specifics on the type of injury. He had gone through physical therapy, but the pain hadn't responded completely. Her mind drifted, wondering why he was in Port Townsend to seek treatment instead of Seattle. She gave a mental shrug and read the rest of Dr. Pye's notes. She formulated a probable treatment plan. 
utilizing a different massage techniques and hot and cold packs. She knew the treatment plan would change once she assessed his abilities and got her hands on the injuries. The announcers broke through her thoughts. Last night's Wolf Morrison made the rounds at the Microsoft launch party for its new version of NFL games. She glanced at the TV in time to see a tall, dark-haired man, his arm around the tiny waist of a young blonde woman. She kept turning to the camera, flashing her perfect white smile, all the time pressing her ample bosom against Wolf's arm. A reporter thrust a microphone in Wolf's face and answered, to a question Gwen didn't hear. She saw a big grin spread over his face. Tiffany Ann agreed to come with me, which was a double pleasure since she is one of the models for the cheerleaders in the game. He turned and looked directly into the camera. Remember, it's NFL superstars, and you can pick up your copy, copy starting at midnight tonight. Tiffany giggled and trilled. It's going to be a great game. She bounced on her high heels, which put her breasts in danger of bouncing out of her low-cut dress. Wolf grinned and waggled his eyebrows in appreciation before he led her inside. Setting those records aside, she reviewed the rest of the files while she finished her coffee. Bree jumped onto the couch and snuggled against her thigh. She smiled and stroked Bree's silky head. You're such a good little cheese dog, aren't you? She murmured as the word cheese. Bree lifted her head and snorted. No cheese now. Later tonight, Gwen laughed. Bree jumped off the couch and found one of her stuffless toys and laid it at Gwen's feet. The front part of her body down at the floor, her rear end in the air, demanding some playtime. Gwen obliged, picking up the toy and engaging in a game of tug of war. When Bree became tired, Gwen took her cup to the kitchen. She glanced into the living room on her way upstairs to take a shower. Bree was curled up in her doggy bed, sound asleep. While she was in the shower, she let her mind drift. She really loved her little cottage, and she loved living in Port Townsend. She had thought she would never leave eastern, the eastern side of Washington. After the accident, she knew she could never return to live in Kennewick again. Short visits to see her adoptive parents were one thing. The tragedy changed her life so that she could never again make a home there. She turned off the water and almost bolted from the shower. To stop the memory, she started singing some of her favorite, uh, favorite ABBA songs. She gelled her hair and put in, pulled into a spiky gel pixie cut she loved. It took her a while to get used to not having her long blonde hair, but the bright red went so well with her green eyes. She was glad that she let her friend talk her into getting a few black chunks dyed into it. The hairstyle was easy as eclectic as the rest of her lifestyle. She pulled on a pair of khaki capris and one of her favorite slogan t-shirts. She sat at a small white secondhand table that served as her vanity and started applying her makeup. She was very careful to cover old scars on her neck and her face. She applied eyeshadow to draw attention from the jagged scar near her ear. She added a swipe of mascara and moisturizing slick of red lipstick. She checked her appearance one last time. Some of her tattoos showed below the sleeves of her t-shirt. She stood up, tugged at the hem of the shirt, and slipped her fit feet into her usual flip-flops. She went downstairs and put the client's files into an oversized canvas, canvas messenger bag. She called Bree to attach her leech. She pulled the recycled car seat bell strap over her shoulder and went out the door. When she had recovered enough to move, she had returned to Port Townsend. It was the last place she and her family had been happy. The cottage had just been listed for sale and she had fallen in love with it at first sight. She knew that not only it was an ideal location for her to live, but also for her massage therapy business. The studio she had built was just a short path from her cottage. As soon as she entered the studio, the calming ambience she had created swept over her. She turned off the alarm and just stood for a moment, soaking it in. Soft eucalyptus green walls showcased the local art in soft, muted colors. She always purchased local artists' work wherever she could. That included the messenger bag she carried to work. The buttery leather couch in the waiting room didn't show its age, 
It had been purchased at an estate sale and the style, style suited the space. It wasn't so big to be overwhelming and not so soft that it couldn't exacerbate a client's pain. A desk stood in the corner with a computer and combined printer fax copier on it. A two drawer oak file cabinet was next to it. On the wall next to the desk was a countertop with a sink and a stack of CDs, a stereo system and a display rack for different products she used and sold stood next to the CDs. She placed the client's files from the messenger bag on the desk. The bag itself went into one of the file desk drawers. She turned on the stereo and started rifling through the CDs to see what she wanted to listen to during the day. She pulled out discs for Enigma, Inya, Lindsey Sterling. She decided to add ocean sounds, rainforest sounds, and an instrument oboe discs. She loaded them into the stereo and selected the button for random play. Once the music started, Gwen opened the door to her massage room. She loved the color she had chosen, especially the warm golden yellow she had chosen for the walls. It reflected her artist's soul. With a happy sigh, she opened the top drawer of the vintage walnut dresser to get two white sheets. She put the fitted sheet over the mattress and the electric mattress pad on the table. She topped the flat sheet with a soft cotton blanket and a homemade quilt. End of chapter one.